Hey guys, it's Brandon, aka Be Rich Beauty, aka your beauty best friend. Happy Wednesday, y'all. Megan plus Harry equals Oprah Tell All interview. There's another accuser that has come forth in this T.I. and Tiny, who scandal chow. And I got your triple D for the day, a little Dr. Dre drama. We're talking about that and a lot more. You know what to do. Grab your tea, grab your beverage, let go. How's your hump day? My, my, my. Let's jump in. But before we do that, you know, Atlanta says we are full at capacity and do not pass go. So I don't know if you guys know, but the All-Star Game was scheduled to take place in Atlanta. Now, Mayor of Atlanta, Miss Keisha Lance Bottom herself, is saying literally, hashtag we full. She went on to say on Twitter, that she spoke to the NBA and to the Atlanta Hawks and said that typically she would be honored to have the All-Star Game be hosted in Atlanta. But because this is an unprecedented year that we're having, you know, aka a pandemic, that this All-Star Game weekend needs to be televised. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> She says, do not come to Atlanta, but most importantly, do not come to Atlanta to party for All-Star Weekend because, because we're going to be closed and we're at capacity. Now, you know what I think is funny? That that narrative that Miss Keisha Lance Bottom wants to have is absolutely true. And she's doing her due diligence as the mayor to say, let's protect the city. Please, tourists, don't come. But what I think the reality of it is, is the kids in Atlanta are like, but that's not going to stop the parties. <laughs> and you see it in the comments. The kids are like, well, they could not come, but we still going to have the parties. Now, and, and, and low key, I legit, because y'all know I just got back from Atlanta. I legit was hoping that last weekend was going to be All-Star Weekend. Because, because you know, <clears throat> he may or may not have had a few fashions that I could have worn to our All-Star party or two. With my mask on, of course. But apparently, she says, do not come. We're full. And the city is like, that's fine. But I guarantee you, we're going to see some kind of party, some kind of all-star day party, all-star pajama party. And if it's not even announced, y'all know it's going to be some undercover parties happening in somebody's hotel room. Because the land is wide open. So as cute as that sounds, Miss Keisha Lance Bottom, you know your city is going to be turned up. Moving on. So Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, oh, excuse me, the Duchess of Sussex and His Royal Highness Prince Harry themselves are sitting down with Oprah for a tell-all interview on CBS for 90 minutes. Because you know, Oprah's a contributor for 90 minutes. Now, only is this a tell-all, but y'all know that Oprah is neighbors, technically, with, like, Harry and Meg. When they moved to California, they eventually moved to Montecito, which, you know, was where Oprah lives as well, on the promised land. Exactly. Well, they're scheduled to do a sit-all with Lady O. Of course, who else would it be? Oprah attended their wedding back in 2018. So she's doing an interview with them. And in this interview, apparently, the word on the street is this is going to be a wide-ranging interview. This interview is going to cover them moving to America, them leaving London, them walking away from their royal roles, and the pressure of being in the public eye. I'm here for it. I will tell you, I may have my tea ready because I don't know if it's going to be as salacious as I want or the crown to have my wine ready, but definitely I'll have a few beverages ready and maybe some popcorn since it's 90 minutes to watch this interview. But you know what the get you gotcha is? They're doing this tell-all interview with Oprah, but there's apparently some backlash that could happen to them because of this tell-all interview. And for this type of backlash, I want to know what they're about to say, because word on the street is this is already recorded. But apparently, they're at risk of losing their remaining royal titles by doing this interview. So, you know, Prince Harry has about like three royal military titles left. And the word on the street is he's at risk of being stripped of his last three royal military titles, which I'm like, is that really a punishment? I mean, I guess if you're, you know, the history with the royals and the military and, you know, having these formal, formal roles that aren't really active uh, is a big deal. And apparently, 
I didn't know that the Duchess of Sussex herself was some form of benefactor for the National Theater there. And unless she's able to get herself another role at the National Theater, there's threats that she will lose her title that she currently has um, with the National Theater because apparently she earned that title, earned, or the title was given to her, I should say, because of her being, uh, you know, royalty now. So here's my thing. Are they really losing sleep over this? Are they really tied to these roles so that way if they are being threatened by losing them, are they going to really be so upset and heartbroken? But I want to know what does, and, oh, and here's the thing, is the queen and the royal family behind this or is the public still so outraged that they've left that they're doing any little petty thing that they can do in order to try to stick it to them because they decided to come up from underneath that public scrutiny and that lifestyle of of living there in London and try to have a normal life. Like Harry saw what being under that public eye did to his mother, literally. And now we also saw what the, the public was doing to Megan. And let me tell you something. Y'all know, and I'm not calling people racist, but there's a deep, long-standing, actually I am, because there's a deep, long-standing history of racial tension in London. They, listen, racism exists. It just may not be as overt. They may they may offer you some tea and crumpets, but you might not know where that crumpet came off the floor from before you consume it. I'm just saying, and the way those tabloids and the news cycle really attacked Megan when they were dating, once they got married, when she was pregnant, they treated her completely different than they treated Kate. So what we know for sure, family, is that racism is alive and well there. And a part of their success for their young marriage was we need to move, establish something for ourselves and get away from it all because all of what we're going through is because we're royal. I don't blame them. And so now that they're doing this tell-all interview, honey, I need to know, why are y'all still coming for their throats? Why are y'all trying to still strip them? He, because at the end of the day, you can strip Harry all you want to, but he was born with a, this platinum spoon in his mouth and he will forever be royal. Okay, but I hope this is good. I hope this interview with Oprah uh, for 90 minutes will uh, it will be good one, but it will also air March 7th on CBS. So make sure you set your clocks for that and your DVRs. Well, they can't catch a break. And when I say they, I'm talking about T.I. and Tiny or Tip and the Leprechaun, however you want to classify. Well, this second accuser has hired Lisa Bloom to be her representative. So we know that Lisa Bloom is that type of lawyer that takes on these high profile cases. And now that it has to do with sex trafficking, all these sex allegations, I can't wait to see how this is going to unfold because you know they're still standing true in their truth, allegedly, that they're innocent. And I saw a video the other day that was T.I. saying, and it seemed to be another a post video uh, of T.I. saying that anything that they have done, now it was, we don't do this, we've not done this, but anything that we have done has always been consensual. It has always been you know, to the likings of everybody in the room and we have not raped anybody. And again, he emphasized consensual. So again, there seems to be a little truth to what is happening. And we're going to see what Lisa Bloom is going to do to uncover the nitty gritty and the dirty dirty. Stay tuned. So I promise you some good old DDD, honey. And this Dr. Dre drama is Spicy. Do you guys know Monice Slaughter? Well, she's a reality star and also a musician. And apparently she was doing an interview not too long ago. And the person that was interviewing her asked her if Dr. Dre was dating April Jones. And she confirmed that Dr. Dre was dating April Jones. Now, what makes this story juicy is the fact that we saw Dr. Dre shortly before Valentine's Day out on a date at a restaurant with April Jones. So fast forward, Moniz says they're dating. Well, apparently Dr. Dre did not like that Moniz confirmed his relationship with April because April came onto social media, Instagram, and said that she will not be threatened by any man, and I'm just assuming she, she used the N-word, I'm keeping it clean, I don't like that word, but she said that no man was going to threaten her 
and that Dr. Dre needs to ensure that these men stop calling her phone because she received multiple calls threatening her about what she said. And she went on to say that she would not be threatened, that she was going to speak her truth, and that if Dr. Dre wanted to play dirty by trying to threaten her, honey, she would be just as dirty. And that if he thought, and these were her words, not mine, if he thought that uh, aneurysm was bad, she was going to be his aneurysm because she is worse. She threw around some f bombs basically said f him f the people f his 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 squad trying to intimidate me i shall not be intimidated i shall not be moved you know very modern day rosa park child she shall stand firm in her truth but all that to say she went on this whole diatribe saying that she was going to be strong and not be intimidated well baby not even 24 hours later she went back to social media and has recanted basically all of that with her tail between her leg and said that she will no longer speak about Dr. Dre. She will no longer take any media interview request to talk about anything and that she may step away to for a little bit of a break from social media and a vacation and that the safety of her, her child and her family are her priority. Oh, sis, we talking about safety now? Girl... What type of dead rat did they put on your doorstep for you to do a whole 360, not a 180? She did a 360 a Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey twirl and has changed her story. Mama sounded scared. Mama sounded like there was some whole mafia-ish that was going down in her DM and on her phone for, um, because she spoke about Dr. Dre. Now... Allegedly, allegedly, she feels threatened. Allegedly, I'm assuming that all of this has happened, um, that she's changed her story because of, you know, whatever. But what I think is so interesting is, haven't we heard these whispers in the past that Dr. Dre is a little gangster in the streets and a little physical in the sheets, allegedly, or I should say a little physical in the house behind closed doors, allegedly. Haven't we heard these whispers? Because for her to change her story makes me feel like something has gone down, down, that has shaken her to her bones for her to feel that her safety for herself, her child, and her family could possibly be questioned. Now, on top of that, if April Jones is really dating Dr. Dre and Dr. Dre did this kind of mafia squeeze on Moniz, sis, are you okay with this? Blink twice. Do you feel safe? Because if he's doing this to somebody he doesn't really know, are you okay behind those closed doors? Because for me, again, those whispers of, you know, aggressive Dre seems to be true, allegedly. And I guess Dr. Dre said Monice was not about to mess with his bag. He's trying to get a divorce from Nicole. You're not about to have him linked to not nail one other person while he is trying to divorce Nicole in peace or as peaceful as possible because we know that drama with him and Nicole has been ongoing. Ooh, child, throw up a prayer for Monice and I'll say a little silent prayer for April Jones. Ooh, last but not least, are y'all familiar with the influencer B. Simone? She's the baby girl. Yeah, her. Well, she's catching a lot of flack because she did an Instagram video about manifesting love. And in that video, she talks about how to manifest love, writing out certain things, but ensuring that if you're going to write out that you need a man to have $150,000 in his bank account, then you can't have 99 cents in yours. If you need your man to be fit, then you need to be fit. If you need your man to love his family, then you need to love your family and not, talk, not, not be talking to your family, right? Outside of all of that, and that manifesting of love criteria, B. Simone is catching heat because the internet is going up again, saying that that manifesting love video and those actions that she told people to take, basically another skill she does really well, plagiarizing, because you know she took heat for that book she published and basically plagiarized chapters and pages of this book from other content creators and authors. Well, apparently now people are saying there are other Two women specifically who has written about this, who has talked about this and years ago, and now B. Simone has taken it and delivered it in the B. Simone fashion. And the internet is saying, sis, 
become better. We're tired of you ripping off other black creators for your personal gain. Because even though it's not monetized, she's still re-delivering and recycling information. Now, I don't know whether or not you agree with about manifesting love and what B. Simone says. I think she's a little problematic about what she says. I think there's some problems within her manifesting of love logic, but that's another story for another day. But what I, I'm curious to know is the manifesting concept really like lock, stock, and barrel, ironclad, copywritten? Because I can tell you, I have a few manifesting books in this house about destiny and manifesting things. And if we're talking about manifesting love, is this really a proprietary item that we can just solely claim? Now, here's the, my thing, though. If you're going to talk about it, and it's a topic that has been spoken about and, and published many, many times, you need to have your own personal spin. And what I can say is based off of what I've seen from these other creators... B. Simone didn't do anything different except maybe change a the for they and a was for now. It, it did not seem original. But again, she can't seem to catch a break. And apparently mom and her team needs to now also start to fact check and quit pulling these Melania Trump moves when it comes to her giving us life lessons and pearls. But anyways, I got to go. You know what to do. Subscribe to the channel if you like. Like this video if you like and leave me a comment. I hope you have a great day. But in the meantime... Who loves you? <laughs> I do. See you on Friday. Bye.